A very good evening and welcome. You're watching the 7 o'clock news on CNC3. I'm Ria Rambley. I'm Ryan Bechu. I am Jassi Marik with Sport. And I'm Clay Hussein with your weather. Let's tell you what's making the news tonight. After 30 years in prison, eight men convicted of killing Dole Chady's brother are set to be released from prison. As concerns loom over the country's porous borders, a parliamentary committee recommends removing border security from under customs and excise. With searches underway for five missing fishermen, National Security Minister fears they could be outside of this country's jurisdiction. Coming up in sport... I wasn't disappointed at all, actually. Advantage Jamaica in their two-match friendly series with the Soka Warriors, but Angus Eve takes Game 1 defeat in stride. Improving air quality, mostly sunny skies and tranquil seas, a perfect weekend to head to the beach. I'll have the details and much more in tonight's weather forecast. Eight men convicted of murdering the brother of deceased drug lord Dole Chady are set to be released from prison after almost three decades. The men could be freed as early as this evening. Their freedom is the culmination of numerous lawsuits, which resulted in them being resentenced by High Court Judge Jeffrey Henderson. Today, Michael Mirage, Samuel Mirage, Damian Ramaya, Bobby Ramaya, Sinath Ramaya, Daniel Gopal, Richard Huggins, and Mark Jaikaran. They were accused of murdering Takur Budram in December 1997 and were convicted five years later in 2002. In 2006, the mandatory death penalties they received upon their convictions were commuted to life in prison. In resentencing the group, Justice Henderson began with a starting point of 33 years in prison. Justice Henderson issued a declaration that their rights had been breached and applied the full one-third discount on their sentences and and then ordered that the time they spent in prison be deducted from their sentences. Now, as this country grapples with an influx of firearms, a recommendation has been made to the government to take the responsibility for stopping its illegal importation away from the Customs and Excise Division. A parliamentary committee into national security has provided a report which not only highlights the low success of customs in stemming the flow of illegal firearms, but also advises that a new unit be established to take away their security and border control responsibilities. Akar Samaru has more. The GSC report firstly contextualizes the gun problem in this country. It calls the firearms industry a lucrative one, valued up to $144.3 million, with the average cost of a gun on the black market in this country going for around $17,500. The report goes on to say that given that this country is not known for manufacturing guns, their prevalence is down to its illegal importation, which the Customs and Excise Division and Coast Guard should be monitoring. Those guns, the report said, come from 66 illegal and 9 legal ports of entry. But when it appeared before the JSC in 2022, Customs explained its challenges with the security aspect of its function. For example, the entity which falls under the finance ministry said its mobile scanners are not fit for purpose, leading to containers needing a physical examination and a staff shortage of almost 50% of what is required. Even more importantly, it appears as if Customs and Excise has been having not a negligible success in finding firearms. The report said in 2021 and 2022, not one firearm was discovered during the scanning process and only seven guns were discovered through physical examination. This has led the JSC to conclude that it is clear that drastic changes are required to transform the efficacy of the customs and border control functions. Therefore, its solution is to separate the border security function from the customs and excise division. It is recommended that security aspect be given to a new agency to be established called the Border Protection and Security Agency, which will fall under the Ministry of National Security. If implemented, this will mean customs will now focus only on revenue collection, the application of trade policy, and collecting and disseminating accurate trade-related data. Meanwhile, this new agency will be tasked with specialized screening and examination of imports for illicit cargo, and to collaborate with the relevant law enforcement agencies if anything legal is found. In the meantime, Customs has been asked to undertake a fierce recruitment drive to get its human resource to optimal levels. Akash Samaru, CNC3 News. 
Meanwhile, the report also named the police service as another entity that needs strengthening in order to combat illicit firearms. Another recommendation is for the establishment of a police inspectorate. This office will be an oversight body with authority to strengthen ethical, professional and integrity concerns within the TTPS. The Port of Port of Spain is working on a contingency plan to ensure customers are not affected by a staff shortage. This is according to Chairman Lyle Alexander after low staff turnout affected operations at the port today. In a release, the port advised customers that they were experiencing interruptions to operations. Alexander said this was because most of the people who did not turn up for work were equipment operators. Meanwhile, President General of the Seamen and Waterfront Workers Trade Union, Michael Anaset, said the port does not practice proper health and safety measures. He added that a meeting on this topic was scheduled for today but was cancelled at the last minute. There was to be a meeting of the Health and Safety Committee meeting which hasn't met over an extended period of time in a place like the port, which is a health hazard, and they call and cancel it for today. That incense sense workers again. Anas had said workers understand the importance of their jobs, but described the health and safety issues as hazards waiting to happen. When you have bad equipment, when you have health and safety issues, when I do not have a proper change in room, when I have a, 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 a call-on center where the general public could have walk in, which has happened, right, where I'm workers' cars are being damaged and all these kinds of things, what do you expect to happen? Anna said, who attended a meeting with management this afternoon, told CNC3 News that they agreed to discuss health and safety issues on Monday. Well, still to come, one government minister says the spat between the UNC and NTA leaders comes as no surprise. We'll tell you which minister believes the political marriage was doomed to fail. Despite an injunction, THA executives promised to complete major Tobago road projects, saying disruptions may be deliberate. Coming up in sport, Jury Murchers won't defend his World Indoor 400-meter title in the final. He was ousted in two rounds today. It's bumper to bumper traffic I am here, and I will definitely be late because I still have to pass by the ATM to get cash for you. So say no, no, no. Don't put you on that. You can pay with cash. So just come straight, yeah. Ncash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use Ncash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on Ncash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Download the app and create your wallet today. We trust the experts at Bagwin Sings and Dan Steel for everyday value, exceptional quality and the best brands. To us, there is only one choice for an array of tiles, contemporary bathroom and vanities, ace paints, classy kitchen sinks and faucets, ceiling fans and lighting fixtures to enhance your decor, coolers and grills for outdoor living, power tools to get the job done right, doors and locks to safeguard your investment. Bagwin Sings and Dan Steel, building value value every day. A body found hanging from a tree in the mangrove in Sea Lots on Thursday remains unidentified. Police also found human bones strewn across the mangrove as well as what appeared to be a human skull with bullet holes. According to reports, police went to an area known as Dog Island around 3.30 yesterday afternoon after trekking a quarter mile into the mangrove. The officers came upon the body and other remains. The district medical officer visited the scene and ordered the removal of the bones to the Forensic Science Center. Six days later, and there's still no sign of the five Cedrus fishermen missing since Saturday. Today, the hunter search and rescue team, led by Captain Valence Rambarat, joined the search. They departed on a pirogue from Ikakas at 9 a.m. and searched two fishing grounds near the Venezuelan coastline. Rambarat says they did a three-hour grid search but were unable to identify any floating debris or any clue to help them in finding them. David C. Paul, the captain, his son Davenan, joined by 
Bria Ali, Shiva Sipasad, and Jeremiah Pasquale left on fishing vessel Amanda for a fishing ground close to Venezuelan waters on Saturday evening. They were expected back home either later that night or early morning. The National Security Minister says the Coast Guard continues its search for the missing Cedras fishermen, but he admits they may be out of this country's jurisdiction. During a sitting of the lower house today, an urgent question was posed to Prime Minister, to Minister of National Security, rather, Fitzgerald Hines, for an update on the search for the five men. The minister provided a brief timeline of the events from the moment the vessel was reported missing to the Coast Guard. However, he said it was reported that the men went to an area that is well within Venezuelan territory. The Coast Guard had been advised that searches had been contacted, conducted by fellow fishermen along the south coast and therefore the Coast Guard focused on the Gulf of Pari Paria and along the maritime border leading towards the Grand Boca on the off chance that the men had not gone to the reported area in Venezuelan territory. It was hoped that the ocean currents would have caused the men to drift towards the Gulf. These searches have not yielded any positive results. Minister Hines underscored a statement from the Coast Guard warning fisherfolk that operating in Venezuelan waters is illegal. However, he sought to assure the House that the search is not over. The Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard is committed to rendering assistance to all and sundry, particularly na nationals of Trinidad and Tobago, and more particularly our fishermen, with whom we have been collaborating and working closely over the years in an attempt to prevent and alleviate the difficulties that this particular group might have found itself unfortunately in. Well, opposition MP Dr. Rudal Munilal attempted to ask the minister if the Coast Guard interceptor vessels in that area are operational. A relative of one of the missing men had alleged that they were not. However, Minister Hines was not able to answer as the House Speaker ruled that question did not meet the criteria under the standing orders. Several organizations say they are in support of any crime-fighting initiatives focused on helping families and protecting children. The support follows Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley's announcement that initiatives are on the way to help protect the nation's children. Dr. Rowley said families will also be able to benefit from a portion of the $100 million allocated to crime-fighting initiatives in embattled communities. K. Marie Fletcher spoke to several stakeholders such as the Children's Authority and the National Parent Teacher Association for this report. And I invite the national community, wherever you are, if you could play any role in these communities, whether it is mentoring, whether it is in assisting in, in, in management. With this call, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley sent a national invitation to all those interested to support the establishment of a commission to help families in effectively raising children. An initiative he said the government already has funds to support in the fight against crime and one that many organizations say they are on board with. Speaking to CNC3 News today, Children's Authority psychologist Krista Ali said their statistics show that children are traumatized by the high crime. Definitely, I do believe that this is a good initiative that is being set up. Um, definitely something that the Children's Authority will also be on board with assisting. I feel like so many things are, are signaling to us that, you know, our children are across the board crying out for help, right? The statistics that we're receiving and the authority, and I keep saying this, it really indicates that we are not treating our children the way that we're supposed to. Children in our society, they're being neglected, they're being abused, they're being traumatized. She said there are already programs in place to help families, but it is often voluntary. And as such, this new initiative should be made attractive so that parents are more willing to take part. President of the National Parent Teacher Association, Walter Stewart, and head of the Single Fathers Association, Rundell Fields, also welcomed Rowley's invitation. Finally, we're getting somewhere. We hardly ever deal or set up the social strategies that are important to deal with the development of the criminal mind. And if this initiative is, in, is an initiative that is geared to treat with that by creating positive alternative in communities, by creating outreach for those families, sometimes or particularly parents who are themselves still children, or parents who are in communities or in particular environments and are struggling to deal with raising children in a particular way and particular manner, then I applaud the initiative. Dr. Rowley said by the end of March, government should have a clear picture on the way forward as he believes a wider effort is required to overcome the current state of crime and violence in the country.
Kay Marie Fletcher, CNC3 News. Well, acknowledging the rise of crime among the nation's youth, Prime Minister Rowley says the government is considering to appoint a commission to help families nurture the next generation. He made these comments following his arrival from the CARICOM Heads of Government Summit in Guyana. So we asked members of the public if they agree with the Prime Minister's plan to appoint a commission on parenting. Well, as far as I see it, nobody here in Trinidad has that kind of experience. So appointing a commission of the same people who have no idea what to do makes absolutely no God sense. But anything that will help our youths and our parents now in this time is greatly welcome. Our beautiful TNT needs it. And so... Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yes, because of that. Because plenty of people know what they're doing. Plenty of children making children. And plenty of adults make children and don't even know what to do. I don't see why not. I believe it's a good idea to help the younger kids basically to the next step into their career and guide them accordingly, ensuring that teachers and schools are doing what they have to do to ensure that we have our next generation and successful and well-developed to make the economy move forward. If that is the case, well, yes, I agree, because if it's a healthy youth, the youth is the future at the end of the day. He could agree with it, yes, some way, could have misagreed it some way, because the parents had to control the children to the end of the day. That's so. all. Right, well, I feel if you could go ahead and do your thing, you could try a thing. Chief Secretary Farley Augustine is awaiting the announcement of the name of the potential buyer of the Petrotrin refinery to either confirm or trash his suspicion that the individual may be the owner of the vessel involved in the Tobago oil spill. Days after the barge washed ashore on the Cove coast, spewing bunker fuel, Augustine raised concerns about a possible cover-up involving the owners of the vessel. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley quickly rubbished this claim. Then, earlier this week, the Prime Minister announced that at least one potential buyer has expressed interest in the point of pair refinery. We'll wait and see we hear the, until we hear the name to see if it's the same name that corresponds with, with um, what I was um, what I was able to share with me. Augustine had initially claimed that the vessel's owner is a potential buyer of the refinery. Chief Secretary Farley Augustine is also saying Tobago's development will continue in the most responsible manner after the High Court granted an injunction to halt construction on the Friendship Connector Road project. Speaking to Guardian Media, Augustine said he suspects there is a deliberate attempt to stop the project. Given that it's an active court case, is that um, it is very clear that there are uh, some in the space with nefarious intentions who will do any and everything to thwart Tobago's progress and development. Um, but we will ensure that Tobago's development continues in the most responsible manner. The injunction was granted on Wednesday to residents of Friendship Estate Millhouse 2 over unauthorized operation and failure to access the necessary legal approvals. Meanwhile, Infrastructure Quarries and Urban Development Secretary Trevor James said the Friendship Connector Road project will be completed even as construction is halted for a second time due to a high court injunction. During a tour of the roadway yesterday afternoon, James said via Facebook Live he will not be discouraged. Jump high or jump blue. Injunction yesterday, injunction to do, injunction tomorrow or not. We are going to finish because it is destined to be so. James accused the PNM Tobago Council and its members of deliberately working to discredit the project. The $70 million road is 75% completed and is expected to be done by the end of March. In tonight's Business Watch, Energy Minister Stuart Young urges the Gas Exporting Countries Forum to pool its resources to build energy security around the world. And Grace Kennedy sees significant progress in the end-of-year financials. Peter Christopher tells us more. Energy Minister Stuart Young has once again advocated for the use of natural gas as a transition fuel, as well as the ability to utilize sovereign resources towards energy security. In his speech at the extraordinary ministerial meeting at the 7th Gas Exporting Countries Forum, which is being held in Algiers, Algeria, Minister Young says it is incumbent upon us to raise our voices globally in the conversation of energy security and food security, and to demand the ability and the opportunity 
opportunities to utilize our sovereign resources and importantly to work together not only in the promotion of the use of natural gas which will inevitably feature as the energy source for decades to come in a clean energy environment but also for us to work together to exploit our own gas resources. The Energy Minister continues, Trinidad and Tobago, as small as it is, continues to play a vital role in providing energy security, not only for Latin America and the CARICOM region, but also as far away as Europe. I call upon us to once again use the body of the GECF to raise the platform and the voices for natural gas. Minister Young also made a call to support the African continent's ability to independently develop its own resources for energy security in that part of the world. Young used Trinidad and Tobago's drag and gas deal with Venezuela as an example of a project that allows two GECF members to move forward to develop resources. Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Energy, Penelope Bradshaw Niles, and Timothy Bash, Director of Energy Research and Planning at the Ministry of Energy and Energy Industries, are also attending the conference. Grace Kennedy has surpassed US $1 billion in revenue for the financial year ended December 31, 2023. In a release announcing its financial results, the company states its 2023 revenues were up 9.5% over the prior year, with profit before tax up 11% to Jamaican $11.4 billion. The company notes the revenue achieved was a significant milestone as it demonstrates progress towards its 2030 vision of becoming a US $2.1 billion company. And now for a look at today's energy and foreign exchange prices. Peter Christopher, CNC3 Business Watch. Well, the rift between opposition leader Kamala Prasad Bissessa and National Transformation Alliance leader Gary Griffiths comes as no surprise to one government minister. Public Utilities Minister Marvin Gonzalez seems to blame Griffiths for the fallout, saying the political marriage was doomed from the start. His comment comes days after Prasad Bissessa and Griffiths had a public spat with the head of the UNC urging smaller parties to pull their weight if they are to team up with her organization. Griffiths issued a statement in response, saying her comments were disrespectful to those that helped the People's Partnership defeat the PNM in 2010. Speaking with CNC3 News just before entering the parliament today, Gonzalez believes Griffith is the problem. He never had a good relationship with anybody that employed him. He fell out with people who employed him and people who would have placed their trust in him. We would have seen his conduct, you know, when he occupied sensitive office in the national community. So what led people to believe that on this occasion this would have worked? I was just surprised it happened so quickly. Meanwhile, he assured that the PNM was not worried about any threat from Griffith or Prasad Bissessa ahead of general elections that are due next year. They have never been a threat to the PNM. So they, if they wish, they can unite. They can form themselves into cabals and all kinds of um, you know, groups. But we're ready to take them on. The people of this country, they are not foolish. And the people of this country by now know them very well. You understand? They are a bunch of bajaks. Also commenting on the apparent split between the UNC and the NTA was Labour Minister Stephen McClashy, who said, quote, cockroach was not business in foul fight, end quote. On Wednesday, former government minister Jack Warner said he was willing to play a role in mending the relationship between his former colleagues. Let's tell you what's still to come in the news tonight. In this Lenten season, fish sales are reportedly slow as high temperatures force fish to migrate from local waters. Another mostly hot and sunny day across Trinidad and Tobago, but for parts of the island, we saw some heavy isolated showers favoring the afternoon hours, especially in Tobago, where they saw upwards of an inch of rain, making it their wettest day since the middle of January, and it kept their maximum high temperatures below 30 degrees Celsius. But across Trinidad, mostly hot and sunny conditions got our maximum high temperatures above 33 degrees Celsius, even with those passing showers favoring northeastern areas and southwestern areas of the island. As we head into the weekend, more isolated showers are forecast, and I'll have the details on what else we can expect just after the break. Ferrera 
obstacle is inside Massey Stores Golf View and Marabella. Explore our bold and trendy collections of eyewear. Experience the latest lens technology. Earn and redeem points with your Massey card at Ferrero Optical inside Massey Stores Golf View and Marabella. This is amazing. But it would be nothing, nothing without a woman on. Of TNT on International Women's Day, Friday, 8th March, a network of NGOs for the advancement of women under the patronage of Senator the Honorable Donna Cox is proud to invite you to Woman Power. of excellence and elegance in celebration of International Women's Day, Friday, 8th March, at the luxurious Napa Auditorium. Come and enjoy talented and powerful women such as Nadia Batson, Carol Addison, Nisha B, Nyla Blackman, These Javier String, and Vaughn and Bigfoot. This girl is on fire! Special guest, Nival Chigla, and your host for the evening, the 1998 Miss Universe, Wendy Fitzwilliams. Showtime, 7 p.m. Special reserve, 300. General admission, 250. And hear this one, a second batch of early bird tickets, if bought by this Saturday, March 2nd, cost $25 less if they last. For more info, call 678-7549 or 491-1802. Woman Power. Your father didn't believe in revenge. Yeah, I do. Holy mother. I'll show you the way. Get a loan at Bremont. The process is simple. Fast and efficient approvals. Receive funds within 24 hours once approved. And no penalty for early repayment. Located at Fort Gallant Street, Woodbrook. Remember, we like to lend. As the scorching dry season casts its unrelenting heat upon the Gulf of Paria, fish are retreating to cooler waters, contributing to scarcity in the market. But as Kevin Felming and Ivan Tulsi find out, high prices and deplorable market conditions are also discouraging customers from purchasing from vendors. As it is Lent, many Christians fast by touching the chicken, pork and beef for fish. But there were barely any customers at the one shriving fish markets in San Fernando and Otaheite Bay today. With prices traditionally higher around this time, vendors say sales have been slow for weeks. In San Fernando, carried sold for $40 per pound, kingfish $40, redfish for $35 and shark for $25. At Otaheite, carried went for $45 per pound, kingfish $35, redfish $35 and shark $20. Boat owner and vendor Mervyn Alexander said before entering the fishing industry, he believed fish prices increased during Lent because of demand. We need to get to understand it before the fish is very hard to catch around this time because of the hot sun. Right, so the temperatures outside will be very high and because of that the fish moves more cooler area. So if you have to really catch a fish, you have to go very far out to catch a fish. So that is one of the main reasons the prices has go up. Coupled with ecological challenges, the San Fernando fish market built in 1924 is languishing in disrepair. Vendors said the poultry conditions repel vendors and customers alike. Jacob Mohammed describes sales as dead, saying he sometimes makes less than $200 to take home to his family. He showed us dry taps at the stalls and the non-functional refrigerator. Presentation before. You come by me to buy the fish. I clean it, right? That's what I clean here. You want me to wash it out and no water. How am I going to wash it out? 
you take it and you don't pay for it. And I'll tell you, but next time you will not come. Now, nah, when I go out to wash a moon, fish it, got it, bloody scale on it still. Yeah, and I put on the shot bit all. But we're not getting that time, we had to pay due. Customers were just as scarce in the market as the fish are in the Gulf of Paria. However, those who purchased smaller amounts said they were aware of the length and price increase and they are okay with it. Well, you know that it, 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 it is the time. Fish, right now the fish are to catch. When I say, you know, kind of scarce. So we expect the price to go up. So that is expected. No, no, it doesn't matter about them already. It is four weeks to go until Good Friday and vendors are optimistic that sales will increase. Kevin Fellman, CNC3 News. Clay joins us now for our weekend weather forecast. Clay, it sounds like a fantastic weekend to be outside. Absolutely, yeah. Our air quality is improving. We still have some bushfires affecting some localized spots. But weather-wise, with the passing showers, it's still going to be quite great to be out on the ocean or even on shore having outdoor activities. It's going to be quite a sunny weekend. So let's go take a look at what's going on in the Atlantic right now. What we do have is a high-pressure system bringing in some winds from the northeast, and that continues to move across the lesser Antilles is bringing with it some low-level cloud patches. And that's why we're seeing these brief isolated showers favoring northeastern areas initially. And as the day heats up, we are seeing some pop-up isolated showers favoring western parts of both Trinidad and Tobago, leading to quite a bit of rainfall in Tobago today. But it has also led to improving air quality. Not a lot of Saharan dust around, most of the higher concentration stuff around Africa and staying there for the next five to seven days. Air quality across Trinidad and Tobago today varies between good and moderate levels you can see that area of good air quality expanding to the west tomorrow we will be seeing moderate to good air quality yet again and that's primarily due to smoke and blowing dust rather than saharan dust now looking at the forecast for us tonight not a lot going on on radar imagery right now some scattered showers mainly north of trinidad and tobago a little bit to our east that could impact our eastern areas tonight interrupting mostly saddle conditions across the country minimum low temperatures between 21 and 24 degrees Greece across both islands. Now for tomorrow, we will be starting off with some variably cloudy skies and as we progress through the day, we will be seeing sunshine mixed in, but by the late morning through the afternoon, yet again, like clockwork, we will be seeing those pop-up isolated showers favoring western and hilly parts of both Trinidad and Tobago, with maximum high temperatures coming in yet again at around 33 degrees Celsius in Trinidad, 32 degrees in Tobago. And that's going to be quite warm as it continues into the weekend. The good news, no marine advisories if you're looking to get a dip in at the beach as seas remain moderate this weekend, waves up to two meters in open waters and less than one meter in sheltered areas. Looking at the forecast for the next several days, well, pop-up isolated afternoon showers sticking with us through next week, with those hot temperatures as well, staying with us maximum highs around 33 degrees Celsius near daily. So hot, breezy, and sunny. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Thank you so much, Colleen. Well, let's tell you what's still to come in the news. Our countries on track to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Tonight, we look at how some factors are eroding global progress. Did the holiday spending put a dent in your cash? Well, hear what? Top up your pocket in the Cash Splash promotion. Win over $200,000, including over 65000 in our weekly draws. Well, hear what to do. Grab any cool, cool, turbo energy drink, Fruta, Cool Kids, Viva, or Oasis Water. Then visit Facebook or Instagram at Cold Cold Caribbean or Fruta Fruit Juice Official for more details. Let's top up your pocket with the Cash Splash promotion. Flavor. Zillish. Level up your snack.
Introducing Advances Energy Vitamins. Advances Energy Vitamins is designed to give you the extra push you need to power through your day. It's not just any multivitamin. Packed with more than 20 vitamins and minerals with added ginseng and reinforced prebiotics. A unique synergistic formula that you will find nowhere else. To help you experience more sustained energy, feel more alive and alert to keep you going strong all day long. See the difference now with Advances Energy Vitamins. Available at leading pharmacies and Pennywise nationwide. Things don't always go as expected. Be ready with Trinry for auto, home, business, and group life. Call us at 800 Trin or visit trinry.com today. Huge insurance premium. Pay your premiums bit by bit with FlexiPay from Trinry. For more manageable auto, home, and commercial insurance payments, call us at 800 Trin or visit trinry.com today. Trinry, premier insurance coverage for less. The United National Congress is holding a caucus in response to Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley's announcement that CARICOM nations are hoping to have all laws in place by next month to facilitate free movement within the region. This was revealed by Faisabad MP Dr. Lakram Bodo in an interview with CNC3 News in front of Parliament today. Bodo says as the party deliberates on the announcement, he will avoid making any comments. However, Karani East MP Dr. Rishad Sicharan says the decision may be a step in the right direction. I can't really speak about the party policy, but um, the free movement of qualified persons around the region is a positive thing. But I will have to wait for my leader to make a definitive um, statement on that. Speaking after his return from the 46th regular CARICOM heads of government meeting in Guyana on Wednesday, the Prime Minister revealed that all governments will go to their parliaments on the same day to pass the necessary legislation to further the CARICOM single market and economy. That special day has not yet been announced. With an unprecedented 1,036 bushfires recorded this year thus far, Agriculture Minister Kazim Hussein is urging the public to watch for displaced and injured animals. Snakes have been spotted in La Romaine, while dead birds have been seen in woodland. At the same time, there is a rising bird population. Hussein says the increase in birds is due to temporary migration triggered by a low water table. The wildlife section and game wardens are actively patrolling the Harahamut Trace woodland area, where the unusual flock has been spotted. The minister says fires, smoke and smog can disorient wildlife, causing them to flee into human populated areas. He says the loss of habitat and food sources pushes surviving animals to seek refuge. Hussein is urging people to be alert for wildlife in residential and commercial areas as the animals emerge from their habitats in search of food, water and shelter. The health ministry says 21 people have succumbed to COVID-19 for the year thus far, with 12 people currently hospitalized at the San Fernando General Hospital and Coover Hospital and multi-training facility. In an update on respiratory illnesses in the country, the health ministry added that four people have died from influenza for the year to date, while nearly 40,000 flu vaccines have been administered. The ministry also noted that they have not seen any notable increase in severe respiratory illnesses within the public health care system. While the ministry continues to pursue the acquisition of COVID-19 vaccines, flu vaccines are free of charge and available at health centers across the country. It's now time to hand you over to Jassy Marik to see what's coming up in sport. Jassy. Yeah, some news about the English defender who's on loan and out of favor. Tottenham's Eric Dyer exercises a contract option to stay with Bayern Munich. And once again, we direct you to the best venues for the best sporting action this weekend. Stick around. Sport is next. Did the holiday spending put a dent in your cash? Well, hear what? Top up your pocket in the Cash Splash promotion. Win over $200,000, including over 65000 in our weekly draws. Well, hear what to do. Grab any cool, cool, turbo energy drink, fruta, cool kids, Viva, or Oasis water. Then visit Facebook or Instagram at Cool Cool Caribbean or Fruta Fruit Juice Official for more details. Let's top up your pocket with the Cash Splash promotion.
Encash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use Encash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on Encash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Yes, I accept Encash. I accept Encash. I accept Encash. Find businesses that accept Encash with the nearby business feature. Visit Encash.com to learn more. Download the app and create your wallet today. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Every day, so many ways, every day, so many target can be fit. You can get it in the morning, you can get it in the evening too, you can get it in the night time, target can be there for you, yeah. Every day, so many ways, target can be screwed up for days, for your breakfast, lunch and dinner, make sure you choose a winner. Now she want me to eat it up, eat it up, eat it up, eat target can be believe it, cannot refuse it, eat it up, eat it up, eat it up, eat it up. Target can be fit. New look, same great taste, same great quality. Oh. Distributed by Amco, a subsidiary of Anta Macau. Style this carnival. Get two complete pairs of single vision glasses for $5.95. Get a free pair of polarized sunglasses with the purchase of progressive transitions with designer frames for $16.99. Or complete bifocals with transitions for $13.99. CV Optical, affordable eye care for everyone. Welcome back to Cypher for Sport now. The Soka Warriors fell to a hard-fought 1-0 defeat against Jamaica in the first of two friendly internationals at the Hazel Crawford Stadium today. Here's Jovan Rovello with more. Dinner. Left back position. This is the TNT senior men had the first shot in anger 11 minutes into this one. Jamaican custodian Jaden Hibbert with a fingertip intervention. Two minutes later, Alex Marshall breezed past the coverage to give Soka Warriors goalie Adrian Fonset something to think about. 23rd minute, debutants Kaim Thomas and Liam Burns combined well to serve another first-timer, Justin Obiku. However, his effort lacked the requisite purchase to trouble Hibbert. The wall ensured that Romario Guthrie's free kick did little to bother Fonset as both teams took a break after a half of half chances. In the second, the reggae boys seized the advantage. Teenager Kaim Dixon found himself in yards of space and after a bit of magic, found his first goal for the senior national team. Brimming, Dixon was just on the wrong side of the post in search of his second. Then, again on the run, found Fonset alive to the danger. Devontae Campbell had a chance to enhance the Jamaica triumph in the second minute of time added on, but substitute keeper Christopher Bigot was equal. At Nikolai Nyron's final whistle, the Jamaicans celebrated first blood in the series. Despite the result, speaking after the game, TNT head coach Angus Eve felt the exercise had served its purpose. We had a lot of players out there who played at this level for the very, very first time, and I thought that they acquitted themselves very well. We were in the game for the most part, and uh, we gave away a sloppy goal, and uh, that's, that's the difference in the game. Eve said he was grateful to be able to expose members of his 60-man working group to the next level. The second match is scheduled for Sunday. Jovan Ravello, CNC3 Sport. All right, thank you, Jovan. Now, the Secondary Schools Football League, in association with the world governing body for football, FIFA, is undertaking courses for coaches and other football officials associated with school football. Speaking from the set of the morning shot on Thursday morning, SSFL President Mariri Gonzalez explained how important the courses are for the protection of children. Persons who are on the technical staff of the various schools, not only for the premiership division, but straight down to the Form 1 division, must have at least done the Level 1 safeguarding course again with the expectation that persons coming in and being involved and interacting with these student athletes, at least some level of checks and balances will be put in place that to create that platform and scenario to have a level of protect, protection. All right, let's switch on over to some track and field news now. 2022 World Indoor 400 meter champion, Jareem Richards, only narrowly advanced to the semi-final round at this year's championship in Glasgow, Scotland, 
and then he bowed out in the semi-final round. Richards landed in lane five of preliminary heat number three, the championship record holder hoping to pave a smooth path to the final. But his heat was not as seamless as he would have hoped. Here's that race from the start. Set. Tillamona is good at running fast, going out on his own. He ran that national record in the heats in Budapest from lane eight in front of the home crowd. But Jareen Richards is answering all those questions about his form in the first 150 meters here. Gathy from Trinidad and Tobago has glided into the lead. He's going to take the belt. 21.60 for Richards. That's great running. Good second place there for Molnar at the moment. Remember, two automatic qualifiers. And that's a big move down the back straight there. by the move from the Nigerian. He pulls up alongside Richards. Richards is looking laboured here in the last 50 metres. Perhaps race rusty. Can the defending champion hold on to a qualification position? Not an automatic one. Molnar cuts the tape. It's a win for him. Fast finish there from the Portuguese athlete El Khatib as well. Could he have denied Richards a time qualifying spot here? Nervous moments for Jareen Richards. He will have to wait and see if he's done enough to get himself into the queue. Of well, Richards did eventually qualify for the semi-final, but only just. He was one of the fastest losers in 47.04 seconds and the 12th man out of 12 to move into the next round. It got him lane number one in the semi-final, but that's as far as he went. Set. Well, it might be a slightly different tactic from Jareem Richards, the defending champion, just on the extreme right of picture. He's closed up on Barrage, but running really well on the outside is Molnar, putting Alexander Doom under some pressure. This is a really intriguing semi-final, and it's Molnar from Doom. Richards in the middle this time. Has to pay close attention. Top three going through, remember. Quachu coming past the shoulder of the defending champion into fourth place, but Doom now just turning it off. Molnar drifts outside. Good run from Kaleo. Doom, Kaleo and Molnar are the three men through to the final. 46.64 seconds for Jareem was a season's best, but not enough to get him into tomorrow night's final. Don't forget tomorrow morning, however, Michelle Liai goes in heat number four in the women's 60-meter heats. That is expected to begin at around 11.40 a.m. Contacted today for comments surrounding the outcome of the no vote of no confidence against former treasurer Kiswa Chaitu, Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board President Azim Basarath said... The Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board will issue a release in due course. Chai Tu, who blew the whistle on a missing half million dollars from the TTCB's coffers in December, was the sub subject of a no-confidence vote on Thursday, which was passed 35 to 12 and caused immediate uproar among cricket stakeholders. It's a story that we will continue to follow and certainly bring you all of the developments as they come to hand. The returning Red Force players made the difference for champions Queen's Park in round four of the TTCB's Premiership One competition today. Hosting table toppers March and Patriots at the Oval on day one, Queen's Park was reduced to six for two at one stage before Jordan Warner and Jid Gooley rescued them with a 64-run partnership. Warner was out for 29, but Gooley rallied along to end up with 66 runs to his credit. Tian Webster made 57, also a Red Force member, and another, Amir Jangu, is not out on 56. Queen's Park closed on 215 for five. In other scores, Kamil Puran scored 177 as Central Sports closed on 265 for two in response to Persal's 94 all out. Mario Belcon scored 126 not out as Merry Boys closed on 218 for six against Clark Road, and Victoria was bowled out for 141 and Power Gen, they closed day one on 30 for three in reply. Well, Formula One's Red Bull team principal, Christian Horner, denies wrongdoing after inappropriate messages between him and a female colleague are leaked. This and more in our international roundup. England defender Eric Dyer has triggered an option to make his loan move to Bayern Munich permanent this summer, signaling the end of his career with Tottenham Hotspur. The 30-year-old joined Bayern on loan this January in a move that was expected to last until the end of the season. 
And although his Tottenham contract was also set to expire at the end of the season, his loan deal included a clause by which he could activate a new 12-month contract at Bayern if he played a certain number of games for the Bavarians. In Formula One racing, Red Bull team principal Christian Horner has again denied allegations of inappropriate behavior after a series of alleged messages toward a female colleague were leaked. Horner was cleared on Wednesday after an internal investigation into his behavior, but an anonymous email with a link to the messages purporting to involve Horner was sent to 149 persons, including Formula One personnel and media on Thursday. Rajiv Surasing, CNC3 Sport. Now from the east, west, north and south, we've got you covered with all of the sporting action this weekend. Here's your sport wrap. Football fans won't want to miss out on the Soka Warriors versus Jamaica second friendly carded for Sunday at the National Stadium from 4pm. If club football is your thing, while the TTPFL's Tier 1 is on a break, Tier 2 will be in full swing. All three games on Saturday kick off at 4pm with San Fernando Giants facing Defence Force at the Manny Ramjohn Stadium, Police taking on Harlem Strikers at the St. James Barracks and QPCC up against UTT at Diggo Martin North Secondary. Sunday also sees three 4pm kickoffs. Bethel FC hosts Matura Reunited in Montgomery, CSW tackles Club Sando at Frederick Settlement Kearney and Miscellaneous Laventil entertains Guaya United at Park Street Mova. In the lone 6 p.m. kickoff, RSSR also welcomes PVDM United to Park Street. And to cricket, the TTCB Premier Division 1 continues. Queen's Park and Best Motors March in Sports enter Day 2 at the Oval. Merry Boys travel south to Battle Clark Road and Power Gen hosts Victoria in Pinal. Carifta Track and Field Trials will be held at the Hazley Crawford Stadium on both days. And the TNT Cycling Federation's third Keep It Fit event, hosted by the Madonna Wheelers, pedals off from 5 p.m. on Saturday at the Arima Velodrome. Rajiv Surating, CNC3 Sport. Well, choosing tonight's sports high was a bit of a task. We found four goals in Germany. One of them, though, ruled them all. Shaloy's attempt could have been a shoo-in if Ginter didn't hit his own so sweetly. Ginter had it sewn up until we saw Matisse Tell's gorgeous curler. Tell was bumped out by Jamal Musiala's twinkle toes for the go-ahead goal. But the best of the lot, hold that from Holder, earns the point and takes tonight's CNC3 Sport High. Excellent stuff there from Germany. That's it for this Friday evening, guys. All right, thank you so much, Jesse. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Get back to living with our fast acting syrups for relief. Welcome to Paradise Pools and Spas Limited, the Caribbean's number one supplier of pool cleaning chemicals and equipment. Explore the largest fully stocked showroom in the Caribbean with the world's top brands in cleaning supplies, pumps, filters, heaters, lights, and beautiful accessories to make your pools and spas feel like paradise. Consult our professionals for quality maintenance service or construct your personal Paradise Pool design. Delivery available throughout Trinidad and Tobago from any of our three locations, Santa Cruz, Duncan Village San Fernando and Conby Tobago.
is an uncertain outlook that the world is on target to meet the United Nations global goals aimed at sustainable development. The interconnected goals are considered significant in responding to a range of challenges. But as Jesse Ramdeo tells us in this report, while this country has been heading in the right direction, efforts must now be accelerated. The United Nations has been on a quest, collaborating with governments to preserve the future of people and the planet. The ambition is to hit the mark as it pertains to 17 key sustainable development goals. They range from no poverty, gender equality, to peace, justice and strong institutions. Over the past weeks, as economic and social pressures and fear have grown. Last year, the UN Secretary General said the world is only on track to meet 12% of the targets under the Sustainable Development Goals. With the clock winding down towards attaining the 2030 deadline, concerns have been mounting that the world is nowhere close to the targets. And with much at stake, such as widespread poverty, shifting climate and access to health and education, we decided to dial down to where we are as a country in achieving those goals. And according to UN Resident Coordinator Joanna Kazana, there has been progress. What we are seeing is that 63% of the Sustainable Development Goals have been already met and reached by Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, this is a positive result. But, but in an interview with CNC3 News, Kazana flag like targets still needed to be assessed or measured. Of course, when you look into the uh, goals for which we don't have the data, there are question marks, you know, like, are we monitoring the everything that we should be monitoring, for instance, in terms of the waste disposal, for instance, in terms of the use of the natural resources such as water? Are we monitoring and adequately reacting to, uh, you know, overfishing of some of the specific species of fish, which is also part of the goal of the life underwater? According to this dashboard obtained from the 2023 Sustainable Development Report by the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network, we've so far managed to achieve the goal of no poverty, as the green indicator suggests. For others, we're ending hunger and promoting sustainable agriculture, as well as quality education, clean water, and those highlighted here in orange are concerned, significant challenges still exist. And goals seen in red, such as peace, justice, and strong institutions, major challenges remain. These goals here, reduced inequalities and irresponsible consumption and production in grey, there's no information available. Particularly telling are the targets that have been going backwards, such as the prevalence of obesity and homicide. It starts much earlier before the actual incident and this, those, you know, the, the worst possible incidents happen. Violence is a really multifaceted issue that grows out of tensions which can be tackled earlier on. In recent years, the country has been grappling with high levels of crime and violence. Interestingly, has been the country's progression in the area of good health and well-being. Jamaica has this uh, maternal mortality indicator much higher, whereas Trinidad is at 76, Jamaica is 98. Even Cuba is not as good as Trinidad and Tobago. But while there's been some development towards the SDGs, there are questions about what's blocking the pathway to progress to some of the others. Uh, difficult access to finance on the global markets. Uh, so. Whereas other countries would be able to, you know, access the concessional finance or more grant assistance from the official development assistance, Trinidad and Tobago is not eligible for a lot of ODA because of its income status. So you are rich enough to be able to cope with a lot of issues yourselves. But those challenges are huge. Little is expected to change if initiatives remain box-ticking exercises that fail to reorient society towards sustainable development. Kazana, however, recognized the efforts for global engagement on the SDGs made by the country's officials. Jesse Ramde, CNC3 News. It's time to recap our headlines as we leave you. After three decades, eight men convicted of killing Dole Chedi's brother are set to be released from prison. As concerns loom over the country's porous borders, a parliamentary committee recommends removing border security from under customs and excise. In sport, advantage Jamaica in their two-match friendly series with the Soka Warriors, but Angus Eve takes game one, one-nil defeat in stride. 
A mostly sunny and breezy weekend, but watch out for those passing showers. As we leave you, let's remind you to stay connected with us on our social media platforms. There you'll find tonight's stories, the latest updates and exclusive content. And don't forget to pick up a copy of your TNT Guardian newspaper. We've come to the end of the 7 p.m. news on CNC3. Thanks for watching. I'm Ria Rambley. I'm Ryan Beach. I am Jassy Marie. And I'm Colleen Hussain. Have a great weekend.